Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Graham Trainer, and I'm proud to serve as president of the Oregon AFL-CIO, the statewide federation of labor unions and a voice for all working people in our state. Thank you for joining us today as we highlight and celebrate the historic investments that have been made in the Oregon economy and in Oregon workers because of the leadership and the effectiveness of the Biden-Harris administration. From the American Rescue Plan, to the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, to the Chips and Science Act, to the Inflation Reduction Act, as just a few of the economic accomplishments, this administration has been laser focused on, as President Biden often says, building the economy from the bottom up and the middle out, not the top down. This is born out of a fundamental belief that is evident across the administration that when the middle class does well, our nation does well too. We also know that President Biden and Vice President Harris see the labor movement as an essential partner to ensuring a future where everyone thrives, not just the wealthy and well-connected. And they see organized labor as an ally in making sure that the historic investments being made from the federal government lands in states and in, in, in our communities in a way that creates good, family-supporting union jobs with benefits. Now, we're thrilled to be here today with partners from the, uh, the public sector, Oregon's congressional delegation, and the Oregon labor movement to unpack what some of these inve investments mean for our communities and our workforce. One example of the Oregon impact that the Biden-Harris administration is having is right here at TriMet's Beaverton Transit Center, and you'll hear more about that from a few of our speakers. We know that these investments are aimed at improving the lives of working people, tackling the climate crisis, and laying the groundwork for a worker-centered transition to a cleaner energy future. And with us today to share their perspectives on what public transit and electric vehicle infrastructure will mean for a brighter future are Kelsey McCauley, a representative from the office of Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici, whose district we are standing right in, Sam DeSue Jr., the general manager for TriMet, which is the Portland region's public transportation agency, Shirley Block, the president of the Amalgamated uh, Transit Union Local 757, Oregon statewide union representing transit workers, Marshall McGrady, representing the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers and their union's focus on providing a highly trained and skilled workforce to build out our region and our nation's EV infrastructure to meet the heightened demand. We've got Serena Rower, a registered union nurse, who will sh share a public health perspective on these investments. <coughs> and we'll lastly have Robert Camarillo, the Executive Secretary of the Oregon State Building and Construction Trades Council, to highlight the job creation for Oregon coming directly from these historic investments. Now, a few housekeeping items. We will hear from each of the speakers before concluding prepared remarks. If members of the press are interested in asking questions or, uh, or follow-up of speakers, please see Russell Sanders, who's on the Oregon AFL-CIO team, who will manage requests and arrange for discussions after we conclude today's event. And with that, I'd like to welcome Kelsey McCauley to share a message from the Congresswoman. Welcome, Kelsey. Good afternoon. I have a letter from Congressman Bonamici to read. I regret that I am not able to join you at the Beaverton Transit Center today to celebrate the bipartisan infrastructure law and its tremendous investment in Oregon. I look forward to continuing to work with you all, labor, transit, state and local governments, to deliver the resources and policies in this historic legislation. In the prior administration, we had infrastructure week, but it was all talk. And now, with the leadership of the Biden-Harris administration and the Oregon delegation, our state and the rest of the country are at the start of a real infrastructure decade. To date, $2.6 billion from the bipartisan infrastructure law is headed to Oregon, with more than 265 specific projects identified for funding. Of these investments, $1.9 billion will improve Oregon's roads, bridges, public transit, ports, and airports. That includes projects right here in Beaverton, like the modernization of this transit station, and in the more rural parts of the state, like the purchase of electric school buses and banks. 
This funding is the largest investment in the na nation's infrastructure in decades, and it's an economic shot in the arm for Oregon's workers, public transit users and operators, and the electric vehicle industry. It provides Oregonians with historic opportunities to secure good paying, family sustaining union jobs. By reaching communities across Oregon, including rural communities and historically underserved populations, the law makes critical investments to improve lives for all Oregonians, speed the just transition to a green economy, and position the state for future success. Sincerely, Suzanne Bonamici, Member of Congress. Give it up for the Congresswoman. Thank you so much, Kelsey. And without a doubt, I know that the Congresswoman would be here if her schedule would have allowed. So thank you so much. Uh, next up is Sam DeSue Jr. from TriMet. Thanks for hosting, Sam. Good afternoon. I'm Sam DeSue Jr., TriMet's general manager. And it's my pleasure to host all of you here at our Beaverton Transit Center. TriMet has been operating buses since at this location since 1998. The transit center has changed and developed over the years with the addition of Mike service in 1998 and West service in 2009. The Beaverton Transit Center will be evolving once again, setting TriMet up for the future to better serve Washington County and its bustling job centers and to make way for more electric buses as we drive towards the goal of a zero emissions bus fleet by 2040. It's a challenging goal that we at TriMet cannot reach, cannot reach without the support from our federal and local partners. The Biden-Harris administration has stepped in support of TriMet, our union workers, and the region we serve. We thank President Biden, Vice President Harris, Transportation Secretary Buttigieg, and our Labor Secretary Sue, and the Oregon Congressional Delegation for their leadership coming through the bipartisan infrastructure law. Really, thank you for the $5.6 million federal investment that's coming through this law here for a renovation here of the Beaverton Transit Center. The result of this investment will be a safer pedestrian environment improved operator facilities and a more seamless experience for people using our buses. This as TriMet begins rolling out our service implement and implementations mapped out and our Forward Together plan, our first restructuring of bus service in agency history developed with our community. The improvements will also accommodate 60 foot articulated buses and a charging infrastructure needed for our zero emissions buses of the future. Today, all TriMet buses, all TriMet diesel buses are run on cleaner burning renewable diesel and our max trains are powered by renewable electricity. But the, inf the investments being made here today by the Biden-Harris administration will help propel TriMet toward a cleaner air future while we continue to get people to jobs and services and help grow our economy. Thank you. Thank you again, Sam. Uh, next up, we've got Shirley Block, president of the Amalgamated Transit Union, Local 757. Welcome, Shirley. Lord, thank you. My name is Shirley Block, president of ATU 757. ATU Local 757 applauds the Bi Biden-Harris administration for the bipartisan infrastructure law between because of its sufficient investment in clean public air, including funding for clean buses. This demonstrates a commitment to improving the quality of public transportation and reducing in the environment impact. The bipartisan infrastructure law provides a provides for clean public transit alignment with ATU Local 757's mission to promote sustainable transportation options, create healthier communities, and ensure safe and efficient transit service for workers and passengers. The funding of the bipartisan infrastructure law will help 
double the number of clean public transit buses and on Oregon roads, contributing to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. ATU Local 757 operators and mechanics are ready to help do our parts to make public transportation cleaner and healthier in Oregon. Communities in Oregon have always received, also received $4.7 million for, dollars for clean transit buses and improved bus service through the DOT's low and no in emissions bus and bus facility, facility programs promoting substantial transportation options. The investment in clean buses through the bipartisan infraction law demonstrate bipartisan support for reducing environmental impact, improving public health, and addressing climate change. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shirley, for your partnership. Uh, next up is Marshall McGrady with IBW Local 48. Welcome, Marshall. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marshall McGrady. I am the political director for IBW Local 48, representing about 6,000 electricians in Northwest Oregon and Southwest Washington. Uh, today, IBW Local 48 would like to recognize the importance of the bipartisan infrastructure law's $7.5 billion investment in building a national network of electrical vehicle chargers. It not only supports the transition to clean transportation, but also creates new job opportunities for our members. These investments are only made possible through the leadership and historic investments of the Biden-Harrison administration. Oregon will see an allocation of roughly $52 million coming from the federal government in formula funding over the next five years through the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program. This will enable the expansion of charging infrastructure throughout the state going north, south, east, west on all our main thoroughfares and highways. This investment aligns with Local 48's commitment to promoting sustainable energy solutions and supporting the growth of the clean energy industry. The establishment of a comprehensive electric vehicle charging infrastructure network across the United States will help alleviate range anxiety for electric vehicle owners and will encourage more individuals to adopt clean transportation options. This will reduce a vehicle emissions and improve air quality throughout the state of Oregon. It will also make your buses just a little bit more quiet when you're talking on the microphone. <laughs> Local 48 appreciates the focus on domestic manufacturing jobs as well, as it ensures that the development and deployment of electrical vehicle chargers will create employment opportunities within our local communities. This investment strengthens the economy, supports skilled workers, and foster sustainable growth in the clean energy sector. IBEW stands ready to electrify America. Thank you. Thank you, Marshall. Uh, next up, we've got Serena Rower, a registered nurse and member of the Oregon Federation of Nurses and Health Professionals. Welcome, Serena. Good afternoon, everybody. Through the leadership of President Biden and his administration, the bipartisan infrastructure, infrastructure laws, investment in electric vehicles and public transpor transportation will contribute to improved air quality in Oregon, leading to better overall public health, health outcomes. By expanding and updating public transportation infrastructure, the law will provide Oregonians with more accessible and affordable transportation options promoting physical activity, reducing sedentary lifestyles, which can help prevent chronic diseases such as obesity and cardiovascular diseases. The increased availability of electric vehicles as a result of this law will help reduce greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution, creating a cleaner and healthier environment for Oregon residents and work towards mitigating the impacts of the climate change on public health. Investments in electric buses and charging infrastructure through the bipartisan infrastructure law is not only going to benefit our communities by reducing emissions, but will help close the gap on health inequities that we know exist in lower socioeconomic zip codes. 
assist in decreasing emergency room rela respiratory related emergency room visits and decrease noise pop pollution leading to quieter, more peaceful urban environments that can positively impact mental health, well-being, and promote healing. Thank you. Thank you, Serena. And our final speaker for today's program is Robert Camarillo with the Oregon State Building and Construction Trades Council. Welcome, Robert. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Sam, for your leadership and TriMet for hosting us. Thank you for your leadership, President Trainer. Thank you to all the amazing union members that made it out here today. Uh, th these, these events aren't possible without <laughs> these folks behind us, right? Th these are the ones that matter here. Um, again, uh, the bipartisan infrastructure laws implementation will help create thousands of union construction jobs across Oregon, providing thousands of exciting career opportunities for new apprentices and support Oregon's growing workforce. This is all thanks to the leadership of President Biden and his administration. The $2.4 billion in funding allocated to Oregon through the bipartisan infrastructure law will fuel infrastructure projects that require the skills of Oregon's building and construction trades members, such as on bridges and highway construction, public transit expansion, and port construction and improvements. These projects will generate a demand for an array of skills from building trades members. The investments in transportation infrastructure will require a significant workforce for new construction improvements and maintenance. This will help us continue to diversify the workforce through our privately funded world-class registered apprenticeship programs, creating career opportunities in all facets of our industry, from the respected careers in the skilled trades to engineers, project managers, and other professions in our growing construction industry. As the bipartisan infrastructure law aims to reach communities across Oregon, including rural areas and historically underserved populations, the construction, pro the construction projects funded by the law will provide career opportunities in diverse regions, fostering equitable economic development and job creation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Robert. And another round of applause for all of our amazing speakers. As you can see, the investments in public transit and EV infrastructure have the potential to be transformational for communities and workers across Oregon. And they're just a small piece of the overall picture of the Biden-Harris administration's economic accomplishments and what they will mean for our state. As Oregonians, President Biden and Vice President Harris have delivered for us time and time again, and we know that they will continue to do so. And I know that we were capable of meeting the demands of this moment to creating an economy, an environment, and communities that will all thrive. And it's with partnerships like this in the region and across the state that we illustrate our incredible pioneering spirit as Oregonians. We stand ready to roll up our sleeves side by side with the Biden-Harris administration to make sure we continue this critical momentum that will put working Oregonians first and create a more fair and just economy. Again, thank you all for joining us today and give another round of applause, as Robert said, for the incredible landscape of union members that we have with us today who are all ready to get back to work. Thank you so much. That concludes our program. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in talking to any of the speakers, feel free to reach out to Russell here. Thank you all.